Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll get started. Thank you everyone for sticking, sticking with us, me, as um, I had a little disaster here and thank you so much Chipo for jumping in and, and getting us going. Um, so this is a Meet the Developer, an architect meeting for the Roseland RFQ. Um, so I'm gonna run through some slides really quickly here. Um, I think a number of you have probably already seen um, uh, these uh, slides. So let's see here. Um, okay, so uh, just for the agenda today, uh, welcome and introductions, talk a bit about Invest Southwest, RFQ process, this specific process, and then we'll finally get to meet the developers and architects, um, and we'll wrap up and have next steps. Um, so I'm Erica Selke. I'm the lead planner for the Far South Region with the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, my colleagues Jasmine Gunn and Michael Penisnack um, are also on the Far South team. Jasmine, I had stay in the old meeting to, to help people join the new meeting. Um, so, uh, you know, we're happy you're here and they were CC'd on all the uh, emails we sent out. So please feel free to send us an email if you have any questions or comments. Um, so just quickly, in Best Southwest, this is really the impetus for this RFQ process. And it's not just the RFQ, it's a number of things. It's uh, um, 12 community, or excuse me, um, 10 communities with 12 corridors. So today we're talking specifically about the Michigan Avenue corridor in Roseland. Um, one of the most important pieces of this are the corridor managers. So we have representatives um, from Greater Roseland Chamber of Commerce, Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, and Calumet Area Industrial Commission, which includes the SSA, Sheila Robinson. So um, I'd just like to thank them uh, they've been doing a ton of work um, in the really critical part of Invest Southwest. Uh, the other piece is uh, building rehab. We have a number of different uh, grants available. I'll put this um, presentation online tomorrow. So you'll be able to go through and click on these links if you're interested in any of these uh, programs. Uh, there's also a proposed streetscape for Michigan Avenue and for 111th Street. Um, looking to start construction near the end of the year. And I know a number of you have attended some of their meetings and have seen the designs um, for them. And I think people are really excited about that. And it's a full um, building face to building face uh, redo of the street. Erica, are you? Uh, could you share uh, the file that you're going through right now? Uh, I think we're just still on your title page. Oh, hmm. this isn't good. Let's see. I may have to leave full screen to do it. Here you, you go. See? Okay. Much better. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway. that's moving now. <laughs> I'll share all of these online so you'll be able to take a closer look um, with the information we have here. Uh, open space activation, far south CDC, uh, open to space on Halstead between 112th and 113th Street. Um, and then uh, this piece of uh, Invest Southwest are the RFQs. So we've already done a number of them in the different corridors. Um, so we do this so um, we can get community input for um, projects along these different Invest Southwest corridors. So instead of waiting for developers to come to the community or come to the city with a proposal, we go out and um, put out a vision that the community has developed that uh, we expect developers and architects to respond to. Um, so this is an example of um, some of the earlier um, Invest Southwest projects that have uh, already gone through the process and some of them have actually started construction. So you can see the real impact that these projects have um, uh, in the corridor. So we're really excited to have this on uh, Michigan Avenue. 
And one of the most important aspects of the RFQ is ensuring that the developers and, and architects and um, finance people and other people involved in the project look like the community that they're in. So we work really hard to ensure um, that we uh, go to developers that um, uh, look like the community and represent the community. And we also try to pair up developers, uh, some who may have not done a large project before, pair them with a developer who has, so then the developer can get that experience and move on to bigger projects on their own. Uh, these are some of the RFP winners, as I had mentioned. So um, design excellence is extremely important to the department. Um, so anything that's proposed, we're looking for the highest and best uh, design for the community. Timeline, um, you can see where we are here. Uh, we're still in meet the developer stage. So proposals haven't really started yet. So tonight you won't see a proposal. You will meet the developers and architects so you can better understand who's working on these proposals. So then um, if you uh, look a bit further down, the proposals are due at the end of June. And uh, there will be a period after that, the summer, July and August, where we'll go back to the community with the proposals and have the opportunity for people to take a real deep dive into each of them and decide uh, through a consensus model, which projects should move forward. Um, so specifically the Roseland RFQ, we've done community engagement starting back in 2021. I know a lot of you have been um, a part of that. Um, and uh, also in conjunction, the uh, Redline Extension Shads at Supportive Development Plan um, uh, planning process was also going on. So we took a lot of feedback from that as well. So all of that feedback uh, coalesced into um, choosing these three particular sites. It's the old Gately People Store site at 112th in Michigan, the Roseland Theater building an adjacent city owned property um, uh, down at 113th place. And then uh, the site at 115th Street in Michigan, which the city owns, and where we will see a new red line station um, coming in. And next. Um, so just to run through this three sites really quickly. Uh, so the first site is the Gately People Store site. As you know, it's quite a large vacant site talking with the community in those other um, uh, meetings we held, uh, we found that people were interested in uh, residential and commercial. This is a really um, uh, visible site and an important site along the corridor. Um, so this was sort of the programming that was thought of having single family or townhome units um, fronting, um, I'm losing it, um, fronting on to um, Edbrook. Edbrook. Yeah. My gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, fronting on to Edbrook, um, and then having a, a bit more density um, at Michigan Avenue and 112th Street corridor. And with the architecture team um, that was helping us, uh, the community, and, and we sort of looked at this type of site plan. Um, so you can see the single family or townhomes over here on Edbrook and uh, a mixed use um, multi-story building, about four-story building at the corner. Uh, and this is a rendering showing what could look like. And again, this is a vision um, that we're putting out there. The teams you'll meet tonight will each develop their own proposal. So it may not necessarily look like this, but this just shows the high quality of architecture we're looking for uh, in the uh, responses we get back. Moving on to the uh, Roseland Theater building um, owned by Reverend Gardner. Uh, so uh, people were very interested in rehabbing uh, a property on the corridor. And uh, again, working with um, an architect uh, 
talking about how they can adaptively reuse the building, and then also potentially have some outdoor space adjacent to the building um, to work in conjunction for different events um, and you know, possibly movies and concerts or, or other things um, that support the theater building. Uh, this is um, sort of an uh, axonometric uh, view of what this development could look like. And then here we have a rendering again that shows that active, uh, active streetscape and people sort of moving in and out of the space uh, next to the theater. And finally, um, 115th in Michigan. Um, so the city uh, reacquired the property in 2022, and uh, the CTA red line is going to run along this train. Uh, that you see at the bottom of the of the photo here. So the station will be located on Michigan Avenue approximately right here. So what's remaining on the site, the land that's left over, which is quite a bit shown here, um, we have available for development. So this is great. So people can live right near the train, easy to get to, easy to get downtown, easy to get to um, other south side sites uh, where they may work. Um, and then uh, this is just sort of a, a diagram of what that could look like. The station is in the back here on Michigan. And then this is looking south, just a, a, a vision of what could uh, happen on this corridor. So again, those are the three sites and the vision for what could happen there. So um, I'm really excited for this meeting because we put out an RFQ request for qualifications. We asked developers and architects to reply and say they were interested in developing proposals along the site. So um, we had uh, five developers, developer teams respond and then 19 architecture teams respond. So we were really happy with that response. It shows people are very excited about Michigan Avenue and see this as a great opportunity. Um, so once we got the developers, we got the architects, we asked them to meet and sort of learn about each other and develop teams. So there's three teams per development site. So a total of nine teams. Some of the developers have more than one site. So for example, um, maybe this shows it better. Uh, so for example, for the Gately site, um, we have Brinshore, uh, the Roseland Rising team, and uh, Celadon uh, and Blackwood team here. Um, and then for the theater site, uh, we have Brinshore, we have Elizabeth L. Carter team, and then we have the Roseland Rising team. And then for 115th and Michigan, um, we again have Brinshore, we have the Roseland Rising team, and then we have the Michaels organization, P3 and Andaleo. Um, so without much further ado, um, I'm going to ask uh, each of the teams, so each of the developers will give a 10 minute presentation with five minutes for questions and answers. Again, they're not showing you a proposal of what they will do here. It's really just a chance to learn about the developer and the architect's philosophy, um, about how uh, uh, they work, um, what they see as important in their work. So it's, it's really just a meet and greet, and we'll get into the proposals later this summer. Um, so I just wanna to put that out there. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we can um, go through those. And the other piece too, while we're watching these different um, presentations, so there'll be five presentations, 15 minutes total each, including the Q&A. So while you're listening and asking questions, if you can write in the chat, what would you like the developer and architect teams to most know about the Rosen community to consider for the proposals? Um, so for example, what's most important to you in terms of the people of the community, housing, businesses, entertainment, recreation, the culture, um, just 
things that you would like the developer and architect team to know. Um, and they'll, of course, be able to, to take that information as well. So with that, I'm going to stop talking. And um, I'm going to ask uh, the first team, um, which I believe is the Brinshore team, with the three different architects uh, to present. Um, and who from that team is, is presenting uh, the PowerPoint? So I'm going to be pulling up the slides, but Ruth is going to be running through the actual presentation. Um, so if you could make okay. me come, that would be great. And I'm sorry, I don't see you popping up here. Is and it, who's speaking? Uh, Dan Milan with Brinshaw. Okay, Dan. Um, Chipo, if you can, or maybe I can make him. Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, one second. Yeah, I, I, actually, you may be able to make him okay. close. Yeah, or, let's see. If um, not. Um, Dan Milan, okay, one second. Let me see if I can make you co host. Thank yes, you. So Wonderful. There you go. Perfect. All right. Okay, I will stop sharing. And um, I'll kick it over to you. Thank you. Thank you guys for the intro. Uh, Rich. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Erica. Um, I'm Rich Shortino. I'm a principal and co-founder at Brinshaw Development. Um, we have uh, applied for all three of these sites. Uh, we, we, we couldn't decide which one we liked more, so we decided that we would apply for, for, for all three. Uh, we're joined by our development partners, um, Center Court Development and Inherent Development. And then we have uh, two architects, or at least two architects on each one of the sites. So we have a lot to get through. We are really just going to introduce ourselves and, and open up for questions. So I will start with Brinshore Development. We're headquartered in Evanston, Illinois, but a lot of our work, if not most of our work, is in the city of Chicago. We have grown over the last 30 years uh, to become a national developer. Uh, we have offices in four different locations across the country, and we're working in 14 different states. We've developed over 125 projects that amount to over 10,000 units. Over 3,000 of those are in the city of Chicago. Uh, we've developed about 100,000 square feet of, of retail commercial space that's included in our, in our project. So we're familiar with mixed use, which is called for on this Michigan Avenue corridor. Most of our projects, I would say all of our projects are mixed income. So we're familiar with how to build uh, affordable housing and workforce housing together. Um, we have uh, done a number of impactful placemaking projects in the city that we can describe to you, one of which is at the top uh, at the corner of Michigan Avenue and Garfield Boulevard with some artist spaces that you're looking at. Uh, and almost all of our projects are joint ventures with community-based partners or in this case with a uh, emerging uh, minority developer in Kamal Murray from Center Court Development. Um, we, we apply various um, techniques to create catalytic developments, um, all of which are intended to provide resident and community benefits. Thanks, Dan. Next. Uh, let me just tell you what the evening consists of before I turn it over to Kamau, because I, I just want to say that each of the developers will, will have a minute to introduce themselves. We're going to talk slightly, a little bit about our approach, and then the architects will introduce themselves. Go ahead, Kamau. Sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Kamau Murray. I am the founder and CEO of the Excess Tennis and Education Foundation and then consequently spun off to form Center Court Development, uh, whose mission is to sort of develop um, housing and neighborhood amenities around the Excess Tennis Center, which is at 54th and State. It is the first indoor and outdoor tennis center in the world to be built by a Black person. It is the first indoor and outdoor tennis center in the world to be built in a low-income zip code. Um, I actually learned to play tennis at Palmer Park uh, on 111th, and my best friend Dave Peterson and I used to throw parties at the Pullman Party Museum. So, uh, I'm very familiar with um, uh, the Rosen community. I live on 117th myself um, and, you know, love Chicago. I'm a CPS graduate K through 12, went to Murray, Murray School in Hyde Park and then graduated with Whitney Young, uh, went on to get a full tennis scholarship to Florida A&M University. 
And I think you'll find, um, you know, we incorporate not only the experience of Brent Shore, but sort of my background in racket sports and how tennis sort of saved my life um, and bringing that back to Roseland uh, in a way to sort of help the neighborhood, help the seniors. Um, so very familiar with the neighborhood, uh, homegrown talent here in Chicago and very proud to be a part of this team. Thanks, Carl. Tim? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking your time. My name is Tim Swanson. I'm blessed to be the founder and CEO of Inherent L3C. We're deeply committed to creating generational wealth through home ownership across the city of Chicago. We currently uh, employ over 30 full-time Chicago, uh, Chicago residents on the west side of Chicago in North Lawndale, uh, building high-performance next, next generation smart homes. Uh, and, and we do this in service to home ownership, meaningful home ownership across our communities. We're currently working uh, on the west side in West Humble Park in East Garfield, as well as North Lawndale, and actively working in Roseland, West Roseland, Chatham Heights, uh, and Woodlawn to bring the power of home ownership, accessible, affordable home ownership to as many communities and as many residents as we can in Chicago. We're grateful to support every community, including Roseland, and in seeing meaningful paths to wealth creation through uh, the ownership of homes. Thank you. I just want to take a minute to just describe how we want how we plan to approach our our development. Um, we want to maximize the community benefits, and and I won't go into what that entails, but I will say that uh, everything that we're trying to do is to maximize what we're returning to the community. Secondly, we we understand that Michigan Avenue is is a vital part of the Rosen community. And we're intending that the projects that we propose will provide a catalyst for uh, further revitalization of the corridor. Um, third, we intend to create local economic opportunities, both in job opportunities, wealth building opportunities, and, and, and beyond. Uh, and, and lastly, we plan to work with local MWBE and Section 3 businesses to make sure that we really are, are, are connecting with the entire community. With that, let me, let me turn it over to our architecture team. Uh, and why don't we start with our Gately's People Store team? Yeah, hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Jason Nuttleman. I am founding principal of Seek Design and Architecture. Uh, I founded uh, Seek and 2021, so just over two years ago, but I come with over two decades of working in our great city of Chicago and the communities that we love. Um, I decided to start this firm um, because I, I felt like there was a great need and um, I had a huge passion for communities and really transforming and impacting um, communities through the built environment. And um, the, our whole approach is to listen first to hear what the community needs, to what the client wants, and to understand what that vision can be and pull that out and start to create something that can be compelling for generations to come. So um, we really approach, approach every project with a humility and a humble approach to understand what is needed to, so then we can design for the people that are gonna be experiencing and impacting that building for a long time. So um, I, I've uh, also partnered up with two of my dear friends and some of the most talented architects and designers that I know. Um, and I'll let them talk for a very brief second, just a quick introduction. Uh, Matt, if you wanna go, and then Will, if you wanna go uh, shortly after that. Thanks, Jesse. And, uh, Matthew Huff, honored to be here. Um, I uh, own uh, a firm. Uh, we're based in Kansas City, but doing work all across the country. Uh, trained in Chicago. Chicago is near and dear to my heart. Um, and uh, we focus on living, uh, focus on affordable housing, and specifically meaningful spaces inspired by people, i.e. the Roseland community. So we're in the middle of doing our research and, and excited to um, present a design soon. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Will DuBose, Will du DuBose Design. I um, originally am from Chicago, Auburn Gresham, so it's an honor to work on this project. Um, I guess uh, we'll be, um, we we primarily work in uh, New York and we are we currently have a few projects in Chicago too. And I'm just very excited to be on the team and uh, 
I think I align with uh, Jason well on some of our um, fundamental um, design ideas and the reason why we design, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Um, okay, let's turn it over to our Rosalind Theater team. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Elise Agnello. I'm the founding principal of DAM. Um, honored and excited to be here tonight. Um, and I'll be speaking on behalf of the DAM Booth Hansen team. Um, our team is 100% Chicago-based, and we couldn't be more uh, excited and ecstatic even to uh, be getting the opportunity to participate in this initiative uh, for our city. Um, our team has collectively earned numerous AIA awards. Uh, we were recently um, got recognition by industry magazines for being Next Progressives and Design Vanguard. Um, and we gained that recognition by um, working on adaptive reuse projects, community-focused social spaces, and budget-conscious neighborhood commercial developments that we think are truly um, the, the good work that architecture can do. Um, we are looking forward to uh, putting our design chops to work on the Roseland Theater site um, to develop something that's catalytic, transformative, exciting, um, and most importantly, something that follows the vision of the community. Um, we're super excited to work alongside Brenshaw and the center court team. Um, yeah, and that's that's it about us. Thanks, Elise. Um, uh, how about our 115th in Michigan team? Uh, hi, uh, my name is Mark Peters. From, I'm the principal from Studio Dwell Architects, uh, and I'll be talking ab um, about our team today. So our team is comprised of uh, Brooks and Scarfa, Scarpa out of Los Angeles and Miami, and Studio Dwell uh, Architects were out of Chicago. Um, our two firms have been working together on several projects over the year, um, the most recent being the one of the Invest Southwest uh, Lake and Kedzie RFP in East Garfield Park, uh, which we just won a few weeks ago. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, we seem to work great together and have a great sensibility that's, that's proven uh, successful so far. Um, Brooks and Scarpa have a great deal of experience in residential, um, especially affordable and sustainable design around the country. They have numerous uh, project and firm awards for their work. Um, Studio Dwell Architects, we've been practicing for about 25 years in Chicago, and our main focus is in residential design. Uh, we design everything from single family homes to residential high rise buildings. Uh, I think collectively we've designed thousands of residential units in uh, numerous communities throughout the country. Um, our design approach um, is kind of a common design approach that starts with looking at the site and looking at the neighborhood. Uh, we try to listen and understand uh, each community, what each community is looking for and in order to create inclusive growth. Um, we try to listen and respect the existing neighborhood fabric, its scale, and help transform that and encourage other development in that area. So that's where we start. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, at this time, I think it's the five minutes that's open for questions. I don't know, Erica, if you if you want to curate sure. the questions. Sure. So. Um... We have a couple in the chat already. Uh, please feel free to add. And um, I appreciate you everyone uh, typing in their response um, to what they want developers to know. So we'll be sure to copy down all of these comments. Um, so uh, one of the questions I think will uh, probably be asked a number of times of, of all the developers is, um, will the community be built for the residing residents um, or will it be for residents that um, come in and there's concern that people who live there now won't be able to afford to stay in the community? So your thoughts about that? I think the answer is both. I, I think the answer is that we, we certainly want uh, residents of the community to be, uh, to be our, first, our first option and uh, uh, to the extent that we can bring in other people into the community that add to the vitality of the community, I think it's uh, it's a, a beneficial for everyone. But but certainly we intend that uh, the the our primary focus is is providing housing, good quality housing for people in the community. And by no means are we uh, uh, intending to 
price they said in any way that it displaces anyone in the community. Thank you. Um, uh, another question, uh, wondering about a small grocer with fresh foods and small parking lot. Have you thought at all about um, what kind of tenants you're looking at? Our, our intent is to find uh, as many locally based um, uh, retailers and, and uh, commercial tenants as possible. So we've done this around the country where we have uh, waited patiently and nurtured businesses so that we can curate our spaces with locally owned and operated businesses. Uh, we hope that we can find someone that can provide uh, produce and, and fresh goods. Um, but um, if not, we'll find somebody. But yeah, our, our hope is that we can serve the needs of the Rosen community, whatever whatever is is desired. And and we will work with everyone in the community to, to hear them about what their needs are and what their desires are. Um, uh, this is probably a question that will be asked a lot too, is uh, what is the plan to ensure that section three and WMBE firms are included in the development? How will recruitment happen? Uh, we, we, not only do we handle it in some in-house, but we hire third-party consultants that help uh, handle our, our outreach to attract uh, minority contractors and, and workers. And we have done this on so many places where we've broken up contracts uh, for larger, larger contracts so that they're broken down so that smaller contractors can participate. Uh, so, for example, if the electrical contract is too big for small contractors, we'll break it up so that they can, uh, local contractors can participate. Uh, and we demand from our contractors that they um, provide jobs for local residents. So we go above and beyond whatever the stated requirements are from the city and that we put into their contract, they have to hire local residents and local businesses. And, and Rich, I'll go a step further. Um, you know, the excess tennis village on 54th and State was a $16 million project. And, and 6 million of that, I subbed out myself to minority contractors uh, to make sure the neighborhood and the community participated in the project. So uh, that is a, a real commitment to ours. Um, it's one of the reasons why I, I joined this team is we share that same vision and we won't stop until um, we'll, we'll go through any lanes even if we have to sub stuff out ourselves to make sure the participation goals are met. And I'll add one more, 100% of our trade partners are local, small, community-based, minority and women-owned businesses. We commit to building the businesses from the block up to make certain we see that next generation show up on larger projects. Great, thank you. So we're at 15 minutes. Um, you'll see there's still some questions rolling in. Um, I think you can respond to, to questions if you want to in the chat or um, we can circ cir circulate these in a bit. Um, so thank you so much for your presentation. And as a reminder, we'll have um, this up online and also have links to everyone's firm. So if you wanna take a deeper dive into their past projects, what they're working on, um, you'll be able to do that too uh, after the meeting. So thank you so much. And uh, now we will move on to uh, Elizabeth L. Carter, Esquire team. Um, I'm not sure who's going to be running the. Uh, Erica, I'll be running the running the slides. So if I could add the control. Sure. Kevin, I'll give you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Awesome. Take it away. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Erica. Hi, good evening, Rosen residents and friends. I want to thank you for allowing myself, my team, I'm Elizabeth Carter, and my, my design and development team to be here today to present to you our, our vision as well as our, our design philosophy to you and introduce our team. But more importantly, I want to thank you for being here um, as Rosen, so, uh, uh, residents of Roseland 
to take part in this process, right? Um, the development process. Too often, we do not see a lot of participation from the community when the city plans development projects. So I'm super excited that there's so many people here today. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So just generally speaking and broadly speaking, who are we? We're team two, um, but we're primarily uh, composed of, of black women, uh, lawyers, entrepreneurs, bankers, community organizers, urban planners, architects, general contractors, um, and residents of Roseland. At least two of us are from the neighborhood. And to the extent that we're not black women, we are women of color and broadly people of color. And why I emphasize the characteristics of our gender and race um, on this project or this presentation is because as you will find in our philosophy that we want to promote um, and want to see a different way of development that we're usually uh, are accustomed to, um, right? We want to promote racial and gender equity. We want to promote uh, resident-led and controlled development, inclusive development. And so as you will see, as we break down the teams and, and, our, and, our, and who we are, you will see that that is very intentional and our team is designed and set up to do that, including our process. So we can go to the next slide. The next. Okay, so we are divided between development team and the design team. The development team um, is Elizabeth L. Carter Esquire LLC, named after myself, um, and as well as a co-developer, general contractor, urban intention design bill, Shavaj, she will um, introduce herself later in the presentation. We can move to the next slide. So the firm is a law firm. It's a business and corporate securities firm um, that uh, increases access to business funding and redevelopment opportunities for underfunded uh, enterprises and as well as underfunded or underrepresented communities. Some of the clients that we serve are developers, are primarily Black developers like Fly for a Enterprise here in the city of Chicago. Um, it was highlighted in one of the city slides earlier. We do also represent developers outside of the city of Chicago, Black, like I said, Black-led, um, one of the most oasis based out of LA, but significant projects here in the city of Chicago. So we primarily assist them in raising capital, right, for the development project. So, so far since 2020, we have uh, assisted our clients to raise, to raise near 20 million. So definitely at most uh, more than 15 million. Um, so that they can fund their businesses, their developments. And one of the biggest issues with development is capital, especially when it comes to Black developers and minority developers. It's very important that we have that skill set on the team of how, how, do we, how are we going to fund this? How are we going to realize this? Um, so that's something that we bring to the table, as well as our background in redevelopment, inclusive development, and bringing those strategies of community on led and design projects. Um, next, we will introduce Shavaz of Urban Intention Design Build. Um, as a Black woman, general contractor with significant experience in the development space here in Chicago. Yeah. Hi, my name is Shabazz Freeman. I own Urban Intention Design Build. We're an MBWBDB um, general contracting firm. Uh, we focus on uh, residential and commercial design and build. Uh, mostly a large portion of our business has been renovations and new builds on Chicago's south and west sides. Um, I am a former interior designer um, turned uh, general contractor have been in the industry for over 15 years. Um, I focus mostly on um, renovations of homes and neighborhoods that would rather not be able to um, have those renovations. So with this project, we are looking to, to give to the community and looking to, I hire most of my contractors or most of my subs are um, minority contractors. So local is huge for me when I'm doing projects. So we're looking forward to doing, to um, assisting on this design on this project. Um, we'll hand it over to the architects. Before we go to the architects, which is Sorry. the exciting part of the presentation, uh, we do wanna discuss our design philosophy, as I mentioned earlier. So part of the, the vision, um, again, with, with, with the extent of um, the community input we will receive later, is to house the building itself and the space itself will house uh, specifically a Black woman-owned holding cooperative that will be itself owned and controlled by Black women entrepreneurs from the city of Chicago, um, come from a variety of different industries or businesses, but primarily businesses that are, are, are women and family-centered, community-centered businesses, um, so that we provide the the particular products and services that the community needs, that Roland specifically needs. 
Um, so um, Chipo and Priscilla do brief, brief, brief introductions um, before we move to the architects of our design philosophy. Sure. Um, so my name is Chipo Nyabuya, I'm also an attorney. Um, my 25 year, my quarter century um, anniversary. Sorry, I'm going off screen because um, bandwidth. I'm having internet issues and we've already had technical, <laughs> enough technical issues. Plus you see my picture, so, and I look better than that. <laughs> uh, our really, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the operations team. And really what I wanna say is, is that we're here um, asking, really asking permission from the Roseland community um, to be your design team, you know, we can go through all of this and everyone can say everything, but it is, it's more than a notion to ask permission and continue to ask permission through the process. Um, Elizabeth has indicated that she is of and from here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a native Chicagoan. However, I have spent most of my adult life in Chicago and I complete and total Chicago file. So I I dare any Chicagoan to challenge me on any fact about Chicago um, and particularly about the South side of Chicago. Um, I'm third culture. I'm first generation American of a Liberian mother and a Zimbabwean father. And that also informs my, um, my, uh, my contribution uh, to the project. I'm really, uh, my lawyering is done from a community development perspective. I've done international community development projects. And, um, and really, you know, Chicago, we always talk about Chicago being a global city. And so for me, the big contribution um, that's important for me to bring is to all bring while also bringing the world into um, into Roseland and Chicago. And so I'm going to kick it over to our um, our first partner who is going to be kind of like in the lead with that Priscilla who is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Priscilla, I'm Brazilian, I'm from Sao Paulo and I have uh, been 10 years of experience of uh, the economy, creative, education, technology, technology and innovation. And our objective is to show the potential of how we will work collaboratively to internationalize action to promote our business globally. And I'm too very happy to be here tonight to get my partners, Elizabeth and Chico, and to be something important for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Priscilla and Chico. Um, and just, just one last thing before we kick it to the architects. Um, what I do want to say is that Roseland, I don't know if you all knew, um, but Roseland, uh, majority of our, our population of Roseland are Black women. Um, and so any project in Roseland that fails to center Black women um, is a, a project that will ultimately build the entire community. So definitely want to emphasize that, especially where Black women our leading households are starting businesses at faster rates than any other group and are more educated than any other group in the entire country. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that these women are supported, especially where the broader system failed to support them through financing and, and other resources. And so without further ado, I want to kick it off to Howard and you, our design partner. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. This is Eric Howler from Howler Yoon Architecture. Kevin, you can go next, please. Um, Howler Yoon is a design focused studio in Boston. We are MBE at WBE. My wife, Mijin Yoon, and I founded the company in 2005. We've been working in Boston, but really all over the world, in Anacostia, Oxbury, in LA. We're working across the country and across uh, different, uh, different countries. Go next, please. Um, we're fortunate to have worked on many different kinds of projects. We're not focused on one particular type. Uh, a lot of multifamily, a lot of adaptive reuse, uh, some landscapes, some public place making. Um, all these projects, I think, are, are quite striking. We're fortunate to be able to work with them. We always partner with local architects, whether it's in Los Angeles or in China. And we enjoy partnering because we always like to learn from our partners. 
Uh, in this project, we're partnering with Moody Noland, uh, who's based in Chicago, and you'll hear from them shortly. We go next, please. Our studio is incredibly diverse, group of energetic designers. We're completely committed to design. Uh, we're completely committed to using each project to advance uh, our mission. I think if we go next, please. Uh, we believe that design is part of a discussion, as part of a debate, as part of a discourse. Uh, and we like to think about design. Maybe a good definition of design is, uh, if science is the study of the world as it is, design is the study of the world as it ought to be. And so we constantly ask, how ought it to be? How could it be more just? How could it be more equitable? How could it be more beautiful? So the next slide, please. Uh, here we started thinking about our role in working on design as kind of building arts, uh, increasingly interested in sustainability, performance, and building science. Uh, and also, what does it do? What's its impact? So designing, uh, building equity. Uh, so these are the three kind of focus areas for our studio. Uh, next, please. Um, we think our design task is not just building, designing buildings, but actually designing a process. Uh, we'd like to be a thought partner for the community as we sort of move forward with some ideas uh, that we're going to try to develop together. Uh, next, please. Um, so rather than show you a lot of projects, we wanted to show you more about process. Uh, all, all of our projects engage with a deep uh, community engagement process. Uh, on the right is a TOD development in uh, Somerville with 450 units at the base of a new Green Line subway train. Uh, we always ask the community what they are aspirations are, what their anxieties are. Um, okay, I see that chat. Thanks. Um, next slide, please. We'll go quick. Um, so this is really about process. Uh, and one project we thought was particularly memorable was the project we did at the University of Virginia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a project that involved a six-month uh, community engagement process, an incredibly painful and difficult project to sort of acknowledge the role of slavery at the University of Virginia which is you know, designed and built by Thomas Jefferson. So for this project, we put together a fantastic team. Next slide, please. Um, which included historians, it included landscape architects, members of the community. Uh, and so we designed the process before we designed the memorial. And what happened is through the process, the community felt like they had a sense of ownership for the memorial. Next slide, please. Um, and when the project was completed, there was a real sense that this memorial was for them. Uh, it wasn't for the university, it wasn't for uh, even for the students, it was really for the community. Uh, and so that project uh, won a lot of uh, design awards. We credit the sort of really thoughtful engagement process for resulting in a beautiful project that everyone felt uh, a part of. Uh, next slide, please. And here we'll hand it over to Moody Nolan. So really quickly, um, in about 30 seconds, because we want to respect the time and process and leave time for, for um, robust Q&A, um, I am Ronald Mitchell. I'm a um, partner and director of Chicago Operations for Moody Nolan, and we are pleased to team with such a dynamic um, you know, collection of talent, um, starting with our fearless leader, Elizabeth <laughs> Carter and Shavaz Freeman, and in partnership with Howler and Yoon. Um, really, really quickly, I think the value proposition that, that we bring to bear, and Eric touched on this earlier, um, you know, both of our firms exercise a, a global reach, you know, in our work. And as our nation's largest and most celebrated African-American owned, you know, architectural practice, you know, we, we believe that our, our work needs to be both nationally rooted and to bring or internationally rooted to bring a global perspective, but also locally, you know, framed, you know, and so that's where our team comes in mind. Next slide, please. Um, so I am supported by your know, diverse team of about 25 professionals locally. Next slide, please. And again, our, our process very similar. Um, again, expertise in a number of different project typologies. Next slide, please. Um, and then very quickly, next couple of slides, um, again, sample projects that we've done locally. Um, this particular one, 43 Green, um, we celebrated the ribbon cut or um, the groundbreaking ceremony for this project just yesterday. It's the city's first equity transit oriented development you know, project as part of the Invest Southwest you know, initiative. Um, next slide. Recently completed a, a transformation of what used to be a beauty supply shop on, on 63rd and Cottage Grove, which is now a tier one, um, you know, federally qualified health center, you know, medical um, clinic for friend health. And then finally, last slide. 
as a child of Chicago and a native of the Inglewood community, it was the pride of my life to be able to, to reimagine and ultimately redesign um, the new Inglewood STEM High School um, on Chicago's South Side um, to really you know, bring life and vitality you know, to a community that I grew up in and know and love so well. So with that, pause, open for questions. Thank you all for your time this evening. Okay, we went a little over, um, but uh, one question I'll just throw out there because I think it's for this team. Um, will this project only be for signatory contractors or will open shop contractors also be able to get work? Um, I'll open that up to Shavaz, but- um, at, this part, at this moment, this will be open. Okay, great. And people, um, you know, everyone, please feel free to continue putting questions in the chat. And um, thank you so much for that presentation. And we'll move on to the third team, uh, which is the Roseland Rising team. So I'm not sure who's working the. Um, That'll be me, Erica. Kim. Okay, okay. I will give you rights. Thank you. Thank goodness we can have like unlimited co-hosts. Thank you. Here you are. One second. All right, there you go. Great. Thank you so much. So if you'll be patient, I will share my screen momentarily. Loading. Apologies, guys. All righty. Can everybody see my screen? Great, 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 great. So good evening, everyone. My name is Kimberly Morris. I am the Director of Real Estate uh, at Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, part of the Roseland Rising team. And on behalf of our uh, collaborative, um, we are honored to be selected uh, as one of the RFP finalists and really excited to introduce ourselves to the community tonight. So I'll start by explaining um, Rises, the Roseland Rising team and how we came together. And so uh, CNI uh, was super intentional about who we wanted to partner with um, in this RFP RS, RS, response. Uh, and so we uh, carefully curated uh, a team that was community-based, uh, comprised of leaders from the greater Roseland community uh, with proven impact on the far south side. So that was uh, something that was very important to us as we as we structured our team. Uh, organizations that were based uh, right here on the far, far south side, either in Roseland or in Pullman, um, who were currently doing uh, the hard work on the ground uh, and who shared our commitment uh, to the far south side. So uh, pleased to introduce our team today, starting off with our co-developer, um, the Far South CDC. Uh, we have Abraham Lacey and Katanya Raby. Um, our consultants and community partners, we have uh, Steve and Bob Quackenbush uh, with Q2 Development. Uh, in addition to the Greater Roseland Chamber of Commerce, uh, Andrea Reed um, and Shanita Bush, Shanita Muse and Wasser Bush of the Hope Center Foundation. Um, in addition to our GC and construction manager, um, uh, Boa Construction, and we have uh, Lee Fontroy on the line with us today. So who is CNI? Um, and so those who don't know us uh, aren't familiar with our work. We are a nonprofit organization based in Pullman, uh, formed in 2010 to coordinate resources and economic development um, in neighborhoods uh, that need it the most, which are the low income and uh, moderate income neighborhoods on the South side. So we seek to revitalize those neighborhoods by creating jobs uh, through high impact uh, real estate development projects. Um, we coordinate financial resources to entrepreneurs in addition to us uh, really sustaining long-term community partnerships in order to get that done. And so CNI has an expansive uh, real estate uh, portfolio, uh, creating over 238 new units of single and multifamily affordable housing 
and over 1.5 million square feet of public uh, uh, commercial, industrial, and uh, recreational space. And most of that being uh, right here on the far south side in Pullman. So uh, CNI has partnered over the years with uh, both private and public stakeholders uh, to develop uh, everything from industrial to affordable housing, uh, commercial, retail, um, and most recently, uh, historic preservation of the National Pullman uh, site uh, that is right here in Pullman, uh, Chicago's first and only uh, historic uh, national park. So as you can see, uh, uh, CNI has a proven track record of uh, successfully managing uh, these high impact uh, real estate projects uh, in Pullman. And so I'll turn it over briefly to my counterpart, uh, Katanya Raby, to talk a little bit about Far South Side CDC. All right, thank you, Kim. Um, so um, good evening, everyone. I'm Katanya Raby. I am the Vice President of Planning and Development and the co-lead for this project along with Kim. I represent Far South CDC. It's an organization that is deeply embedded in the Roseland and Far South community areas as an active partner and neighbor. We're a nonprofit that provides a variety of direct services, including residential support and HUD certified housing counseling, and we've assisted over 10,000 residents and created more than 200 homeowners in the area. Um, we have a business development services department that helps, um, that is has created more than 200, uh, or I'm sorry, oh, got my notes all messed up, y'all. Sorry about that. Um, our business development services, um, it, it manages our active local SSA district, which runs along South Hostage. Um, we have a storefront incubator with 10 women-owned businesses, and we're an Illinois Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We also provide equitable planning and development services. Via our Bring It Communities Back initiative, we are taking a bold approach to repopulate the far south side and spur economic growth in areas that have suffered from disinvestment, returning corridors to thriving community anchors. Some of our development highlights include Pop Heights Park, which is located at 112th and Hostet, where we transformed two large vacant lots into an active public outdoor plaza with the support from DB, D, DPD. Um, we are currently working on Morgan Park Commons, which is a planned redevelopment of the former Jewel grocery store at 115th and Hostet. We received tax credits from the Chicago Department of Housing to support the development work, and that will soon be underway to create 286 units of multifamily housing. Um, we also led the process of developing a master plan for Roseland's medical district, which sets forth the vision, framework, and development strategy and design guidelines for planning, design, construction, and operation of mixed-use campus focused on high-quality patient care for the 95-acre district. Additionally, we led the Major Taylor Trail Framework Plan, which has a study uh, of the existing and potential land uses of for city-owned and county-owned properties adjacent to the trail. So that was a really, really quick overview of Far South CDC, but we are right here in the community and uh, right on over on 115th and Halsted, and we're happy to connect. Uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Kim. Thank you. Thanks, Katanya. So what is Rosen Rising? Um, we really understand that uh, the revitalization of Michigan Avenue is really central and key to uh, bringing back the Roseland community. Um, and it's, it, it takes more than just the development of one site. It really takes a, a comprehensive and holistic approach um, to development. And so that is why, um, you know, we apply for all three sites, realizing that um, it's going to take more than one, one site, one off uh, project to really get the Michigan Avenue corridor up and, and revised again, like, like it used to be. And so, Rosen Rising is a, a comprehensive uh, community development strategy uh, that really envisions uh, the development of the three sites, which are uh, um, um, Michigan Station, the Gately People Site, and the Rosen Theater Building into vibrant and culturally rich commercial corridor, uh, something that really mirrors the, the vivacity and the robust uh, commercial activity of what Michigan Avenue used to be. Um, and so, 
our goal is to really bring high quality retail, uh, amenities, housing, dining options with a strong focus on uh, small businesses. Um, we want to incorporate uh, lively public spaces uh, that celebrate really the art and the culture and the history of the neighborhood uh, while creating spaces that are uh, safe for the community to gather. Um, it's our belief, um, you know, that every Chicagoan deserves to live in a community with access to basic goods, services, uh, quality jobs, uh, and affordable housing. And so the development of these sites uh, will bring Roseland closer uh, to becoming that livable, walkable community that its residents really deserve. Um, and so our goal for this project is really rooted in three fundamental uh, values, one being equity, first and foremost, uh, two, capacity building. So everything from um, our development teams uh, to uh, the people who we want to work in these in these spaces. Um, and then uh, economic empowerment. We really uh, want this these developments to benefit the community that, that is uh, looking to serve. And so uh, to help us bring that vision to life, we have three amazing uh, development teams that we want to bring to you today uh, and introduce to you right now. Um, first up is uh, the former Gately's People's Site Store um, and our partners at uh, Canopy Architecture and Design. So I'll turn it over to uh, Jamie Torres. All right, you can. Yeah, my name is Jaime Torres. I'm the principal and founder of Canopy. We are a Chicago-based firm. Our experience is exclusively uh, focused in the city of Chicago. Um, we see some images of some of our staff here. Over 80% of our staff would be recognized as um, self as BIPOC and or women uh, in the industry. Uh, first and foremost, I just wanna thank everybody here that's uh, here past seven o'clock. Sure, you have other things going on tonight, so um, we'll hopefully make this entertaining and, and, and informative. Um, <clears throat> yeah, deeply honored to be here with you all. Um, a little bit about our firm: <clears throat> we are, uh, you know, we describe our, our practice as one that's rooted by the notion of architecture as a vehicle for positive change. Uh, I am I'm a product of Chicago, born in Cook County Hospital, grew up in the South Side in uh, South Lawndale. Uh, so really, the work that we do uh, in all, all sides of the city. Are so meaningful to us. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, so it is truly an honor and privilege to be here uh, meeting with you all tonight. Um, a little bit more about our firm. We are, uh, <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, as a Chicago-based practice, we believe heavily in the notion of both socially and environmentally driven design. Uh, most of our work, if we go to the next slide, let's see. Most of our work is rooted in both housing and what we describe as uh, community-driven projects. Uh, we, be we believe in the notion of a collective design, meaning that uh, you know, we, we work with the idea of, uh, of building a concept through community. For us, uh, you know, every time we design, we design with community. No solution is the same. Uh, we, we believe heavily in both empathy, uh, transformation, but really uh, responding to context and what what is the, the community is looking for to nurture and, and enrich uh, within existing context. Uh, so for us, you know, really thinking about uh, some of the work that would be representative of some of those ideas that you see in front of you, there's a few samples of some of the work uh, that we've been working uh, on over the years in Chicago. Some of the more recognized award-winning projects on the left side is uh, an affordable housing project completed in the Albany Park neighborhood that's a uh, culturally infused, climate-based design-driven project uh, uh, in, in one of the most diverse communities in the city. Uh, in the middle, there's a, a two-flat design that we completed in Pilsen. That's a lead certified home. So we believe heavily in high-performance buildings. And on the right, uh, there is a veterans-driven housing project that uh, was completed uh, about a year or so ago in design, and it's um, really done with construction. But again, really thinking that uh, that uh, you know, the core core of our work is stemming from uh, collective design process means a lot to us, and uh, we have a couple of other the other design partners for the other sites. And I'm going to pass it back to Kim. Thanks, Jaime. So next on our list, we have um, the Rosen Theater Building, and uh, we'll have our uh, partners at Future Firm and Product Tour talk to us about that. Our mail. Yeah, thanks. Um, my name is Armel. I'm a project architect here at Future Firm. Uh, we're a Chicago-based practice consisting of nine professionals, and we are thrilled to be collaborating with 
Mexico City-based architect studio uh, Fractura, who have projects in, in uh, Mexico City, other countries, and several projects across the United States. And so we're excited to bring our combined knowledge and experience to this particular project, especially given that it involves the, the adaptive use of a historically significant building along a street that is has this incredible history and character. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, feature firms and product tours combined experience spans many different types of projects and scales. Uh, on the left, we have a couple of our Chicago-based projects. Uh, the left hand corner is Bronzeville Winery and lower left hand corner is Silver Room. So in these projects, we've worked very closely with clients and collaborators. And through these experiences, um, <clears throat> I mean, we've seen how projects can be transformative, not only within the confines of their walls, but also within the communities that they serve. And then on the right, we have a couple of images from some product tour projects uh, in the upper right image. This shows a, a new canopy over this building. And so reshaping the space under it and activating previous unused spaces while below um, is an adaptive use of a former factory building into a new space for various offices and features these like interstitial outdoor spaces for gatherings. So uh, in both these projects on the right, you know, taking old buildings and giving them new life while retaining the, retaining the uh, previous character um, is something that's very interesting to us. And so working with old structures, we're particularly versed about that, particularly uh, excited about it, especially given uh, the context of the site. Next slide, please. Uh, on this slide, we have a couple of other projects to show. Um, on the left is Equity Arts. Uh, which will be the feature home for BIPOC artists and creatives in Wicker Park, while below is the Nike School Project in Chicago. And then at a different scale, just to show some of the projects on the right, there's the new headquarters for the Houston Endowment and the T.O. Pansoco uh, Culture Center. So thinking about the life and activity that happens in buildings and how they shape how we come together socially and culturally to thinking of a large scale of how buildings shape public image, and neighborhood identity is something that we're always thinking about and something that uh, we see great potential for in the Rosen Theater. And I can pass it on to the next team. Great, thanks so much, Armel. Uh, so last but not least, we have our third design team in uh, Gensler and Beehive, which will be focusing on Michigan Station. Um, and then we have uh, Dion Lucas here representing the team. Dion. Thanks, Kim. I appreciate the 30 second uh, time pitch. Uh, my name is Dion Lucas. I'm a partner and co-founder at Beehive, and we're on team three. Um, as you know, Gensler is a world renowned, one of the largest firms in the country, led on this team by Andre Broomfield. And he and I have been collaborating for the last few years on several different uh, notable scale projects across the city, including North Londale and Bronzeville. Uh, myself and our team is a hyper-local based firm. Uh, right now we're rooted in Inglewood with other projects that we're doing across North Lawndale, Bronzeville, and other parts of the community, inclu including the Pullman Roseland area. Next slide. And here you'll see a few different projects that are currently in the works. Both uh, we're working with Gensler, on the Lawndale Children's Discovery Center, and we've collaborated with them on several other projects, including the Roosevelt Square, the Ave Willan Station, and there are several others that are upcoming in our pipeline. And I think that's all the time I have. That is, and we want to be uh, respectful of our uh, limitations here, so we're going to uh, wrap it up quickly. Um, want to thank everybody for their time. We would love to continue this conversation. And so uh, one of the things uh, that we've done so far is to create a community survey. We realize that this is uh, but a brief introduction to our team, um, but uh, community voices are essential to uh, how we move forward and what we essentially will develop on these three sites. And so uh, we've come up with a couple of mechanisms for you to uh, provide your feedback. Uh, one is our community survey. So you can either scan the QR code or click the link um, and we'll be actually dropping that uh, link in the chat as well. Or you can email us at uh, roselandrising at gmail.com. Again, with any questions, concerns, uh, feedback, things that you want to see on this site. 
um, you are our neighbors, our coworkers, our uh, community partners, and uh, we want to uplift your voices in these this process. And so, um, please, please, please take the survey, uh, send us an email. Um, we really want to hear from you. So we look forward uh, to uh, hearing more from you, uh, continuing uh, this engagement uh, through DPD's platform um, and beyond. Um, and also, if you want to read more about Rose and Rising, our goals, our team, uh, we also have that uh, URL here as well that you're able to click uh, to get more information about our team. Uh, and that oh, okay. questions. So we can open up for questions at this time. Uh, thank you, Kim. Um, so we're over the uh, 15 minutes, so I want to keep moving. Um, and as a reminder, I will put um, all of these presentations on uh, online tomorrow. Um, so you'll be able to go back and, and read uh, this information as well. So um, with that, I will move on to the next team, uh, which is uh, Celadon and the Blackwood team. Um, so and I will be sharing my screen. Oh, excellent. Thanks. Uh, Maria, if, um, well, let's see. Uh, I'll hold off until you have the presentation up. Okay. There you go. Sorry. I muted myself. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? No. No. Nope, not yet. Okay. And feel free to keep putting your questions in the chat. I know we're running out of time, but um, uh, it'll be good to to have them in there um, so we we know to keep yep. them in mind moving forward. We can see it now, Maria. Great. Thank yeah. You. If you can if you can do full screen. Thank you. Okay. Thank. You. Great, thank you. Um, my name is Scott Henry. I'm a, a principal with Celadon Partners. I'm joined uh, by my partner, Aaron Wisner, and uh, my uh, co-development partner, uh, uh, um, Blackwood Group, uh, uh, Jose Duarte, uh, uh, with whom I'll be an, um, introducing to you uh, shortly. Uh, Maria, if you don't mind, it, there's a number of images that appear kind of in the beginning. If, you, if maybe if you could just sort of slowly go through them as I talk okay. while, uh, until you get to the United Yards uh, screen, and then if you could stop. Um, I don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, on our projects that we've done or are doing. Uh, the fact of the matter is, You've got a great group of developers and architects, and we all can build great, beautiful, wonderful projects. Um, you'll see some of those images uh, uh, as I'm talking. Um, but I do want to highlight uh, three things or so about our approach that I think differentiates us a little bit. Uh, and then I'll, I'll introduce you to, to Jose. Um, but um, you know, from, our, from my standpoint personally, um, my grandparents on both sides uh, emigrated from uh, Hungary and Scotland to uh, Roseland. Uh, my grandparents went to uh, Fanger, as did my parents, uh, and I was born in uh, at Roseland Community Hospital. Um, my mom and my grandma went to uh, West Pullman School, and I had the honor of being able to acquire that building um, uh, and work with Urban Works, our architect, to uh, convert that building into 60 units of affordable housing for seniors. Um, and so it's it's a real important goal of mine to be part of uh, Roseland's comeback story. You know, there's others that are doing great work too, Abraham Lacey and David Doig, but I'm honored to be part of that group to, do, uh, to, to help with uh, Roseland's comeback story. And I hope to do it again with this uh, the site, the Gately site. My, my grandmother worked there when it was a, a department store. So super excited to, to bring life back into that site. Um, the second thing, what Roseland needs is certainty and, and that's what Celadon can offer. You know, <laughs> many of our projects are financed with non-competitive sources, in fact, this particular project, we've already identified 70% uh, of the capital. So when, um, you know, if we are selected with the city's financial support, this project will be built. It won't be an if, it, it, this building, this project will be built. Um, 
And then the third thing I want to highlight is just community, community, community. And um, we have this image of uh, the uh, Invest Southwest transaction that we were awarded the United Yards project in, in Back of the Yards. Um, that project um, started with a great idea, but it ended with an even better um, outcome with all the community uh, input that we, we solicited and took. Um, and that's the exact same approach that we would take in, in, in Roseland. It's all about the community. These are publicly funded projects. The community has to have a big role and a big say of what, of what these projects are and what, what, and what they will be. Um, but that, that's, that's kind of big picture, our approach. And Jose, I'd, I'd love to introduce you now. Uh, you're the uh, president of um, uh, Blackwood Group and would love to have you chat about uh, your part of your involvement in the team and, and our approach uh, to United Yards and, and how we'll approach uh, Rosalind. Sure. Um, well, thank you for that, Scott. And, and thank you all for, for your time this evening. Um, a little bit about back Blackwood Group. Um, I founded Blackwood Group back in 2007. Um, we are a minority certified firm um, in construction and development here in Chicago. Um, myself and, and my principal, my partner, uh, Rafael Hernandez, we have a total combined of 55 years plus experience working most exclusively in the Chicago area and Chicago neighborhoods for you know combined over 55 years. Um, I think as Blackwood, um, we have um, we pride ourselves on our direct connection with our communities. I was born and I was raised in Chicago. I've lived in Chicago since I was about six months, so essentially almost born in Chicago, right? Um, my partner also was raised here in Chicago on the south side of Chicago. And so um, our, we we do a lot of community-based work. Uh, we do a lot of work with not-for-profits in the communities in the west side and the south side. Um, as you can see in the picture here, uh, my partner was actively uh, you know, involved in the building of Casa Queretaro, which is a, a project for the Resurrection Project. Uh, there might be another project uh, and another one. La Casa Student Housing is, is another one that uh, we were involved as construction managers, as general contractors. Um, again, it's a, it's a project that was focused on uh, student housing, uh, winner of the 2012 Dry House Award. Um, and so I think there's one more slide that pertains to us here. Um, you know, so on the general contracting side, we, we also do... Um, work as with JV partners, in this case, Albany Gaines, McCoy, uh, Albany Terrace, McCoy Gaines uh, is a project where we're joint venture partners on the contracting side. So um, our background, our experience is kind of unique that we do both development and construction. And so I think we bring that level of expertise uh, to our internal teams, which I think is, is a great value. And, uh, you know, I, going back to our connection to the communities, I, again, we are really engaged with, with community partners. I think 90% of our work that we do are non-for-profits, uh, community organizations, not community-based development that we do. Some clients include Enlace, Thresholds, Latino Progresando, Access South, IFF, Brighton Park Neighborhood uh, Council. So our footprint is, is thoroughly focused on the south and west sides of Chicago. Um, and again, that's a little bit about us, but then if, if I can go back to United Yards, I think Scott and I partnered up on that project. We were successful in winning that project, but we heard clearly from the community um, that they wanted to see more. We were focused on the affordable housing piece and the runner-up was a was a, a very strong, committed community um, member who had a great idea of entrepreneurship, of bringing economic business development to the corridor, opening up those opportunities to local members of the community. And um, you know, through the community-driven process, we really worked together to expand the program. So it began from from affordable housing, and it really ended up being not only uh, physically catalytic, but um, also economically catalytic for the community. 
because of the involvement, the expansion of the program, where now you have a combination of affordable housing, um, local retail, local entrepreneurial support. And uh, I think that's something that um, we are really proud of that, and that we want to really expand into, into Roseland and bring what we've learned from that program and incorporate it into this, into this proposal. Well, thank you, Jose. Um, I'd love to turn it over to, to Pat and her team and talk a little bit about Urban Works. And uh, we, we have a long relationship with them and super excited to continue that relationship here. Yep, thank you so much, Scott. Um, so thank you, uh, we're Urban Works. We are a firm rooted in Chicago. I started the firm 30 years ago, I'm born and raised in Chicago. And our focus is to create a positive social impact, not only in communities and neighborhoods, but throughout the city. Uh, we're a certified WBE MBE, and each of the principals have had over 32 years of active design experience. Um, myself, a licensed architect, and Maria Peo, you'll hear in a couple minutes, and she is not only a licensed, talented, licensed architect, but also an urban planner. So we have a strong connection to all the communities in Chicago. We've designed over 3,500 units of housing, including over 2,000 affordable housing units. Uh, we're a small but mighty firm. We are local, but we uh, have had uh, tremendous success with a focus on design excellence, winning over 45 local and national design awards. We've worked throughout the city. The orange dots are the projects that we've done. So as you can see, we spread north, south, and east and west across the city. Our project types uh, span from educational to parks, to uh, affordable housing, to university work, because we truly believe that a neighborhood and a community needs uh, to, to have the macro of uh, a whole neighborhood and also the micro of many different amenities throughout the neighborhood. We uh, list here the design awards that we've won. We're very proud that we win at least two design awards per year with a, a staff of um, only 22. Uh, we're very focused on making sure that it's the best design in all communities and especially the underrepresented communities. Not only do we uh, believe that architecture, uh, the best architecture should be in all neighborhoods and those neighborhoods that need it most. Uh, I loved the chat uh, comment about the fact that if you want to hear from community, you need to go out into the community, and that's exactly what we do. Our design philosophy is that we have to look at the culture, the context, the codes, sustainability, um, agency, in order to create a holistic environment. I won't go through all the components. And again, uh, client engagement, community engagement, uh, we do stakeholder meetings, we meet with the elected officials, we meet with the community as a whole, and we decide together with the community and the city what is needed in each location. This is one project that won an AIA Distinguished Building Award, and it is a, a veterans housing. And we show this because it's smaller scale housing, very similar to the Gately site that we're uh, going to propose on. But as you can see on the right, what won us the award is the fact that we wanted to make sure it had natural daylight, that it had um, not only flat roofs, but some high roofs. Uh, we think about every detail in the building. Also another project, Potomac Condominiums, uh, that we did with one of the partners of the Blackwood Group. Uh, as Scott Henry said, we have worked on many projects um, over more than 15 years. This is housing. Um, and then closer to home, Roseland, uh, All Saints for Catholic Charities. It was 42 unit addition for senior citizens. And again, the West Pullman that we showed earlier, uh, and Maria will talk a little bit about this project. Yes, thank you, Pat. Um, as Pat mentioned earlier, at Urban Works, we really focus on projects that are rooted in communities, that are for communities, and that are bought by communities, and that have a ripple effect uh, and a positive effect outside of the boundaries of the building or, or its uh, property, its physical impact. Um, this is one such project. This was done with the Celadron Group, as mentioned by Scott Henry, and it turned a, a closed down um, wonderful asset in a community as an existing school into 60 affordable 
livable apartments for seniors. Um, each unit is actually uh, very unique and different. We kept a lot of the details and um, the character of the building and incorporated that into each of the units. We really feel that um, bringing in the character of the building into each project is, is critically important. Um, but most importantly, we uh, always carve out spaces and create spaces for community to happen within the building itself. Um, we've done that throughout our projects and here you can see one such space. We really believe that having uh, strong connections between neighbors um, really has a positive impact outside of the physical building itself. Um, another example is the La Casa Student Housing Project. This is uh, first of its kind in the nation. It is affordable housing for students. And what's unique about this project is that it allows for students um, from all different universities to live together, to collaborate, to share knowledge and experience. Um, this is rooted, it's, it's in the heart of Pilsen, it's right by the pink line. Um, the building itself is uh, very respectful of the existing context in scale and in color. Um, it's a modern interpretation of the, the brick um, architecture that you see throughout the city, um, and especially in this area. And again, we were very conscientious of making sure the buildings speak of of the neighborhood, therefore, for the community, for the residents, um, and communal spaces are um, critical to each of our projects. And then quickly, uh, if you can keep going through the slides, that's a back of the yards project. When we talk about giving back, it's near to where I grew up and making sure that, again, natural daylight and clean, beautiful uh, spaces are created for those that, that need it most. You can keep going. Um, a project also near the University of Chicago that had mixed use that has a daycare center on the first floor. You could keep going, Maria. And small details like windows. Uh, this one is a, a Invest Southwest project that um, we are going to be building a couple blocks from the uh, original Invest Southwest site. And then I uh, want to introduce uh, Jock, our uh, design team partner. Uh, we met because of the fact that we're uh, so so focused on making sure that uh, the next generation knows about architecture, except, especially those that are underrepresented. So I met John Gay, the owner um, at IIT when he did our finals, and I also teach at IIT and teach class at UIC. So John, I give it over to you, and I know, I know we're leaving you like half a minute, but get, if you could go fast. Are you there, John? Yeah, I was muted. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so very quickly, I want I want to point out that uh, number one, um, I've experienced uh, Roseland's transition. Um, I grew up in Morgan Park, played little league baseball, little league football in Palmer Park. So I traversed 111th Street um, as a young uh, adolescent, um, and I find it interesting how my design work keeps bringing me back to communities that I have been in in my uh, past. Um, currently, we are working on uh, renovating um, the design and renovation of 11001 South uh, Michigan Avenue in Roseland. And, um, you know, it's, it's very, very important to us. So here's, here's a project here where we're a finalist. Uh, this is a concept that we designed uh, that's that's uh, for a concept uh, competition in Washington Park. Um, it's highly sustainable. Um, we infuse sustainable systems into all the work that we do. This is a mixed use building that has a high tech community center in it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we work very closely with Commonwealth Edison uh, for 548 Capital uh, over in Inglewood. And we actually rewrote part of uh, Comet spec for infusing uh, VRF heating and cooling into this uh, 28 unit um, adaptive um, renovation building with 13 storefronts. Uh, next slide. Um, as, an, as an architect, uh, our design reaches um, custom housing as well, but custom housing in historic districts. I want to br bring this forward because uh, Roseland has an amazing housing stock. 
and we are extremely sensitive to the details in the context of the community where we work. In fact, our philosophy um, has rules of engagement that have us learn the rhythm of the community that we're designing in. The client becomes a part of the design team, and it's kind of like the rhythm between band members on the band stage. Um, there's a lot of call and response and working very closely with our clients. This project was actually designed based on um, Thelonious Monk's 1966 version of Sophisticated Lady. Um, next slide. Um, this is a, another home in the North Kenwood community uh, where we work very closely with the client, got approval from design um, board as well as the Commission on Landmarks. And this was designed based on um, James Brown, um, urban, uh, gotta be funky. Uh, next slide. Um, this is our, our home studio. And I'm actually seated at the top of that grand stair that you see. This has been uh, um, published four times. Uh, it was designed based on Yolanda Adams' Time to Change. And uh, again, we have a lot of fun learning the rhythm of the community in which we design. These two sister homes were designed based on Kenny G's silhouette. And in fact, we created a, a brick pattern uh, known as that we named the silhouette pattern uh, and how we developed that pattern. Uh, next slide. Um, this project was a concept design for a developer, brand new beginnings in Washington Park. Um, we took our contextual cues specifically from multiple entrances of the amazing buildings, uh, multifamily buildings in um, Washington Park. This is a project that's currently under construction, uh, designed based on Stevie Wonder's uh, Always, and it, it, it's a re adaptive reuse of a bungalow and with a severe cantilever off the back. So this is important because we're showing how we can take and merge contemporary with historic. And um, the Beverly Historic Community loves this. This is a, a home that we did in Kenwood. And um, we totally redid the exterior of this facade and worked very closely with uh, the client and landmarks. Thank you. Okay, thank you team. Um, I wanna be give uh, the final team here, last but not least, um, a chance to do their presentation. So um, thank you so much for everyone for staying on. Um, I know uh, this Roseland community is very interested in, in what's going on. So I appreciate you staying. So um, last but not least, we have the Michaels organization, P3 Markets and Andaleo um, with Studio Gang Brook Architecture. You want to kick off and and who's presenting? Right. Erica, can you... go ahead. Well, no, one second. Let's just pop up the the PowerPoint. Um, Erica, can you let Al Alice Winsey put that up, please? One second. Oh, Erica, Erica, can you do that, or do you want me to do I it? I don't think I can. I've... Okay, I'll do it. Thank you, Alice. Yes. Okay, Winsey. Okay. One Thank second. you. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Phil, I'll let you go ahead. Ready? Uh, as soon as I, okay, there we are. Hello, Rosalind. Uh, last but not least, here we are. My name is Phil Beckham. I am one of the managing partners of P3 Markets um, and based in Brownsville. And I'm going to just give you a little bit of, of overall of our team. Uh, first of all, this team came together because of our diversity, the diversity in thought, the diversity in design and how we work. Uh, but we come together singular because we are our listeners of our neighborhoods that we work in. Uh, we have a lot of different projects that we do all over the, the country and some in the world. But when we get back down to it, we are we chose 115th in Michigan because we, are, we all have that experience in the uh, TOD process. The transportation-oriented development is uh, special to everyone on our team. Uh, it helps us uh, help neighborhoods become walkable neighborhoods using public transportation. Um, it was mentioned earlier, 43 Green. 43 Green is a project uh, P3 Markets uh, is involved in with the three phase and we're very proud of it. 
uh, we are here to listen. We have a base, uh, a nice parameter of what we'd like to do, but we're also here uh, to listen to the people that already live in the community. We can all build buildings that uh, can bring new people in, uh, but the basis of this uh, is to listen to the people that already live there and how do we make your neighborhood better? So from that, I am going to move forward uh, and introduce uh, my business partner, Juan Saldana. Hello, everyone. Uh, very happy and grateful to be here and thrilled to be part of this uh, this project. So um, as Phil mentioned, I'm one of the managing directors of P3 Markets. We're a black and brown development firm from Chicago. And so our purpose is deeply aligned to the needs of the community. We, we aim to really look at what the community needs. And I keep hearing that uh, Roses wants his comeback story, wants to bring it back to its uh, former glory. So we intend to do that as a team. Also, uh, from inception to completion, our projects provide opportunities for the community, residents, and entrepreneurs to participate. And uh, we invite and engage the community to co-create and refine plans, respecting and promoting local culture. That's absolutely important as part of our DNA, as part of our purpose. And so our team is actually deeply aligned. That's how we all came together. Um, also want, want to let you know that um, what you can expect from our team is to collaborate and champion community wealth by hiring locally, developing high quality mixed use housing, providing retail opportunities, and outstanding amenities for the community. I think a uh, part of doing a development is making sure that those amenities are there so people can interact and engage with it. Um, some of our projects, 43 Green, Phase 1, Phase 2, and the Skina Cafe project in Little Village, uh, our, our projects help revitalize corridors and bring uh, you know the life that's already there uh, to the project and really make it uh, about the community, about building neighborhoods together. Thank you. I'll go ahead and I'll pass it over to the Michael team. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Juan. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with everyone today. I'm Andrea Keeney. I'm a Vice President of Development with the Michaels Organization. Um, Alice Winsey from our office is also here and will be working alongside me on the project. Um, for those of you who don't know us, the Michaels Organization is a national leader in residential real estate. We have offices throughout the country, and we've developed a significant amount of properties in various states and currently manage about 74,000 residential units. Um, our Chicago team focuses mostly on affordable and mixed income project, but our national team also works on student and military housing opportunities. Um, in Chicago, over the last 20 years, we've developed 2,500 units of mixed income housing in really diverse areas of Chicago, including Woodlawn, Bronzeville, Near North, and Old Town. And our mission is to develop projects that jumpstart housing, education, and neighborhood prosperity. Um, one thing the Michaels organization is extremely proud of is our educational scholarship program. We've awarded over $12 million to our residents since 1990. Um, again, we're really excited to be here and have the opportunity to work with Roseland residents in the city of Chicago on a collaborative vision for redevelopment of the 115th of Michigan site and one that allows for building opportunity, wealth building opportunities for residents. Um, I'm going to kick it off to Melvin Thompson, who's going to be serving as consultant on the project. So Melvin, you're up. Thank you so much, Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Melvin Thompson, I'm a consultant to the project and I'm just over the top about this opportunity, um, having served the past decade organizationally um, on the 95th Street corridor, as we consider that the anchor to and gateway to the Roseland community. So I'm just extremely excited about ETOD and the two partners, Michaels and P3 Markets that are gonna lead this initiative. Um, they're already doing the work uh, around transit stations and equitable transit oriented development is the way of the future. And I'm just excited about what's unfolding. Thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Brook Architecture and Ramona Outlaw. Oh, hi, my name is, uh, uh, good evening. Hi, my name is Susana Retana, uh, project architect. Um, our, um, Ramona is the, um, uh, out of town, but uh, she is the founder principal um, of the Brook Architecture. Um, uh, Brook Architecture has 28 years uh, servicing the Chicago communities through um, both private and public uh, developers. Um, we design places where people um, live, learn, work, and play. Um, uh, we listen carefully first, 
and then design beautiful solutions for uh, complex uh, problems. We are very excited uh, to work on this team and to be working on uh, Roseland. Now we pass it over to um, Studio Gang. Thanks, Susanna. Um, hello, my name is Torsten Yuan, and I'm a design principal here at Studio Gang. Uh, which is led by my boss, Jeannie Gang, who would love to be here today, but uh, sends her regards. She founded the firm in 1997, right here in Chicago, and we have since grown to about 140 colleagues in four offices, including New York, San Francisco, and Paris. When I started, we were nine, so a lot been going on, and a lot of, but a lot of uh, hometown pride for working in Chicago. Uh, I'm joined here today also by a couple of coworkers for this opportunity, Aurelian, Shauna, and Julio, who all bring uh, significant experience in mixed use residential and urban design projects in Chicago and in the Midwest. Uh, as for Studio Gang, while we do work all across the country and internationally, our projects across Chicagoland are special to us for the opportunity to work in neighborhoods that our 70, roughly 70 uh, team members uh, here in town call home. Uh, you may recognize our Auckland and Regis Towers as well as other residential projects like City Art Park and at the University of Chicago. But we also work on a wide variety of other typologies from urban planning projects like uh, Lincoln Park Zoo in Northern Island that often include deep engagement processes. And that uh, not shown here is our, uh, a good example for that is our Memphis Riverfront Master Plan. Um, uh, it's, we're excited that that's nearing completion this summer. It's a 30 acre park along the Mississippi River in Memphis. And that park's design incorporated the ideas and input of all Memphians from across the city because early in the design process, one of the strategies that we implemented was that City Gang created and led our youth design leadership program, which brought together local high school students in a paid internship uh, to learn and practice design skills, uh, attend and present at project meetings, and contribute. So, in that way, contribute their ideas to the design of the park and, you know, feel some real ownership. Um, we also worked with the City of Chicago and the Golden Institute uh, on the Neighborhood Activation Study, which establishes a replicable, replicable design and planning across. Uh, uh, planning process that can be used to uplift community aspirations in neighborhoods across the city, focusing first on West Garfield Park. The study offers short-term design interventions from streetscape improvements and new community plaza, and the design process also involved youth design leadership program participants similar to the one in, uh, in Memphis. Finishing uh, off the list of typologies, we also do community centers like the Lava Zorio Community Center in Auburn Gresham, which you can see in the middle of that slide here, as well as public facilities like two boat houses along the Chicago River. At the core of all of our work, independent of scale or type, uh, it is about building community. And that's why we're really glad to be here today with you all uh, because building in an existing context, as many have said before, but first of all, for us means listening. And uh, or as Jeannie would say, start with what's there. So next slide. In our team's vision for the Rosen site, fostering community means providing a range of spaces where exchange can thrive with a new mixed use anchor at the intersection uh, of Michigan Avenue commercial corridor and the extension of the red line that make the site an amenity we believe not just for residents but far beyond this property line and i think uh wrapping us up here is uh phil is that right yes thank you so uh again you i, I really appreciate the opportunity i just wanted to make sure that the uh, residents of uh, roseland understood that uh yes we will uh, you know, build uh, housing, but I know the main factor and the main question is is uh, food and grocery um, and other amenities, but mainly fo food. And that's a that's a process that we have to make sure we sit down and listen. But we also have to make sure that we find the right uh, food uh, grocer that fits, because as we know, recently everything every food uh, grocer doesn't fit in every neighborhood. So we are super focused on that. 
but part of that focus is listening and and also reaching out to see what what actually fits. So to finish, we appreciate the time. Uh, thank you, um, and everyone have a great evening. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, so you have a few minutes left here for uh, Q and A for this team. Um, so there's some uh, great ideas in uh, the chat. Um, so um, trying to see here. I think one of one one of the things that comes up um, quite a bit is how um, you would go about uh, hiring, um, particularly people from the community. So if you could talk a bit about, um, and this is uh, for the uh, uh, final team here, about your philosophy in terms of hiring and, and how you go about that. Well, there's hiring um, on various aspects. So hiring for the contracting, um, obviously we're gonna be working, we're gonna be looking to work with a minority contractor. Obviously that's subject to DPD kind of review and approval and doing kind of a public bid. Um, we have always met or exceeded uh, local hiring um, within all of the projects that we've worked at. So that's something that we'll continue to do in Roseland. I will say that the Michaels organization also manages all of its projects. We always look from within the community to hire all the property managers, the janitorial and maintenance staff that work at our buildings. Um, and we're also gonna do, um, you know, we're really emphasizing for all the retail that we're bringing in, emphasizing local residents as well and giving them opportunities first. Great, thank you. Um, and we've had a couple um, uh, questions here too about um, animals and other uses uh, like shelters and things like that. Um, so I know you had touched on grocery stores. How else are you thinking about penancy um, for, for your project? Phil, do you wanna take that one? On the pets, is this about pets? Well, just about your tenants, how, how you- Okay, no, tenant, okay. so tenants, so again, uh, we, we, we've been in the, in the neighborhood. We have, uh, Melvin's been there. We know what's there. Um, but again, you know, we, we are looking for uh, great food opportunities, uh, mix in wellness with uh, some space, a great space for, for uh, different parts of, uh, to, to match on with the Roseland's uh, medical district. Um, and to bring more of that to that area where you can not just get great food, but you can have uh, the coffee shops, which everybody always wants as a great meeting space, but also how it flows with the, the upcoming uh, red line, uh, yeah. trains and how, you, how it flows, how you're able to get on the train, get, pick up something, get off the train, uh, enjoy a restaurant or, or pick up uh, uh, things that you may need. But again, it's, it's what the people in the neighborhood want first. Uh, we wouldn't bring something in that that has nothing to do with what what the neighborhood wants. I mean that we would yeah. love to, we would love to have the donut shop there, but it seems they've already reestablished themselves <laughs> in their space. So uh, and you're, that as well. yeah, I just wanted to add to that that you know it's very important that when we design um, you know even the the program for the tenants, we're looking at the amenities uh, so the community can come together, right? Uh, Really looking at looking at that deeply, working with the community to figure out how do we how do we integrate the community into the project, but also where they interact with it constantly, and they can actually feel like they have that sense of ownership. They're part of the story of the comeback. That's super important for us. So as we're looking at at building and the program for tenants, we need that information. We want to work with them and co-create those opportunities. But more importantly, we're also going to build cultural amenities so people can get together. You know, there's there's a very rich, vibrant culture around roles, and we want to make sure we bring that into the project. And Erica, I'll close with, we've spent a lot of time reviewing the list quality of life plan, and we've tried to really look at the principles established there and make sure that we're meeting those within our redevelopment plan. Okay, great. Well, um, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much uh, to everyone for staying on. I know it's been a long evening, um, but this is so interesting and we've kept most people on, so that's great. Um, so I will post uh, the recording. Um, if the teams can please email me the uh, PowerPoint presentations you gave this evening, I will post those online as well. 
um, and also links to everyone's firm webpage so people can go in um, and uh, take a closer look at each, each one of the different firms. Um, and we'll also save the chat and put that online as well. So again, this is sort of just meet and greet, uh, keep uh, your ear out. Uh, the proposals are due June 30th. So after we do a quick internal review, uh, just to make sure all the points are met, we'll take them out to the community um, in July. So uh, we'll certainly send out an email blast to everyone uh, when that meeting comes up. Um, so again, thank you so much. And I'll send out an email with links to everything um, tomorrow. So thank you, have a great night. And thank you so much, Chipa. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for saving the meeting. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. thanks. Good night, night everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for thanks great. Everyone. Thank you. Good night. We expect to see us. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm gonna stop recording. Thank you. Okay. I stayed in the other room till 7.30, so I hope.